Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and today I'd like to teach you how to find the domain of this rational function of f of x is going to be equal to x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1. Now, whenever you want to find the domain of a function, I want you to ask yourself a question. Are there any values of x when you plug it into this function that's going to lead to a wacky result? All right, that's the question. So you analyze this piece by piece. Analyze the numerator analyze the denominator, and then analyze the total function. So when I look at the numerator, I'm thinking to myself, all right, I have x. I can pretty much plug in any number here for x and add it to 1. There's really no restrictions on that, right? So that's fine, all real numbers so far. Then I go down here, and I'm thinking, is there anything I cannot plug in to x here and square it? Uh, no, right? You can plug in negative numbers, positive numbers, old numbers, zero, right? Everything, okay? So there's really no restriction at the moment. So there's no, re and also then you're going to subtract 1 from it. So again, there's no restriction down here. Now, though, when you look at the overall function, you want to ask yourself, is there any problem, you know, dividing certain numbers by other numbers, right? So you'll notice that there is a potential issue. What value can you not have in a denominator? There's one special value, 0, right? You can't have 0 down there. What's 5 divided by 0? I don't know. It's undefined. Can't do it, right? So that I now have identified a possible restriction. I know that my denominator cannot be equal to 0. So I ask myself the question, what can x be that will produce an overall result down here of 0? In other words, x squared minus 1, what does x have to be in order for it to equal 0? So just set the denominator to 0 and just do a little math now. So you can do this in a bunch of ways. You add 1 to both sides, right? Here's one way to look at it. And then you're going to take the square root of 1 because you got to get rid of x squared. You just want x. So what that means then is that you have plus and minus radical 1. Now, what's the square root of 1? Well, obviously, 1 times what will give you positive 1? Well, both positive 1 and negative 1, right? So x can be, or for this function, if you plug in a positive 1 or you plug in a negative 1, it will result in an overall value of 0, right? What's 1 squared? Well, 1. Then what's 1 minus 1? Well, 0, okay. And then how about x? How, what? How about negative 1, I meant to say? How about negative 1? When you square negative 1, what do you get? A positive 1, and what's 1 minus 1? Oh, 0, okay? So you have all real numbers, so the domain is all reals, except for these two x values, all right? So when you go now to graph this thing, right? Let's take a look. So just graph now x plus 1 if you wanted to get a visual here. x plus 1, then divide by, open those parentheses, x squared, all right, x squared uh, minus 1, close the parentheses and graph it, you see there's something a little funky happening here right at positive 1. Okay, you kind of see a little vertical asymptote there, right? Now, also what doesn't show up here, though, is nothing looks weird at negative 1, right? Over here, nothing looks strange. But when you go to your table of values, you'll notice that there's two errors, okay? At negative 1, you get an error, and positive when you get an error, that means uh, the, the calculator has no clue what the value should be because the denominator has become zero when x is positive and negative one. All right, so those are ways to look at it. Um, you know, sure, that's it. That's all I got for you. So thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. Uh, we'd love to help out more people. We love all the support you guys are giving us. Thank you so, so, so very much, really from the bottom of our hearts. Um, we're continually trying to put out stuff uh, for you guys here, not only in mathematics, but check out our channel because we've got chemistry and physics as well. We have thousands of videos out there. We solve specific problems because that's what you're going to see on your test. Practice, practice, practice. That's what's the best. Now, don't, you know, you can look over your notes and stuff. That's fine and dandy, but you got to do problems. If you want to become good at something, you have to be actively engaged in it, right? On your test, you're going to be doing problems. You have to do as many problems as you can so you can do well on those exams and get to wherever you want to go, whatever kind of schooling that is. And we'd love to help you get there. Take care.